Can we use ice cubes to prevent a running CPU from overheating? After all, if you touch an ice cube to a room temperature processor, it'll melt instantaneously, which is super cool and shows just how good the IHS is at transferring heat. So what'll happen if we instead touch an ice cube to a heated up running processor? Well, today we are going to put it to the test, as well as experiment with a handful of other cooling methods, such as using a can of compressed air and its electronic variation. So stick around to see which of these ridiculous cooling methods can actually keep a CPU cool, and which ones cause the CPU to quite literally start melting. Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and today's video is sponsored by AI Camp, who enables students to explore the field of artificial intelligence prior to going to college. AI Camp offers an immersive and project-based three-week program that caters to your goals and interests while preparing you to be self-sufficient and industry-ready in the world of AI. Previous student projects include using AI to detect wildfires, classify garbage, and even identify endangered marine species. If these types of projects sound interesting to you, AI Camp's upcoming summer program is now accepting scholarship applications. Last year, 10% of all accepted students received a full-ride scholarship, with 60% of all accepted students receiving partial scholarships. Check out the top link in the description below to fill out your AI Camp scholarship application today. And finally, if you're a student who already has outstanding experience with artificial intelligence, AI Camp is also seeking mentors to teach others during the summer program. If that sounds like you, then fill out the second link below to apply as a mentor where you can spread your love for machine learning while getting paid to develop personal projects and cultivate your portfolio. Regardless of if you're a student or a mentor, AI Camp is a great opportunity to further explore the field of artificial intelligence and can even lead to some amazing internship opportunities down the road upon successful completion of the program. Thanks again to AI Camp for sponsoring today's video. Back to our tech tinkering, as you may know, when your CPU performs various tasks such as rendering footage or spinning up a video game, it draws electricity to course through its billions and billions of transistors in order to function properly. This action results in producing a lot of heat, and left unchecked, if a CPU gets too hot beyond its own operating temperature, it'll implode, metaphorically. In reality, your computer will simply shut down in order to stop feeding the CPU electricity and give it a chance to cool down to prevent any actual damages. But if this forced shutdown happens while you're, say, in the middle of your Battle Royale's final circle, you're not going to be having a good time. That's why in modern gaming PCs and even workstation computers, we manage the temperature of our processors with active cooling, mainly in the form of CPU air coolers or AIO water cooling. CPU coolers are generally composed of two parts. First, a metal block made up of copper or sometimes even aluminum, which sits right on top of the processor to passively conduct heat away from the CPU. And second, a spinning fan or water pump to help dissipate the collected heat away from the metal block with either air or water. These designs are pretty nice because they allow us to increase or decrease the amount of active cooling based on the current temperature of the CPU. For example, if our computer is simply running one tab of Google Chrome, we can tell the air coolers fan to spin at 20% capacity. But when we open up a second tab of Google Chrome, which for some reason uses all of our computer's resources, we can set our fans to full blast, preventing our CPU from overheating. Now that we understand typical types of cooling, let's toss it out the window because today's focus is on ridiculous ways to keep our CPU cool. First up, ice cubes. What happens if we use frozen water to try to cool our CPU? On paper, it seems like it could work. They're cold and we use them to cool things down like hot soup or tea. So why can't it cool a CPU? What could go wrong? Well, well, for starters, as they melt, the water could be conductive and completely short out our computer, which is not ideal. So to avoid that, we're going to be using these handy metal cups to house our cubes, and then simply place these cups directly on our processor with a bit of thermal paste squished between for some extra good luck and better heat transfer. With our plan of attack for ice cubes set up, let's first actually grab a quick baseline temperature measure of how hot our system runs under normal circumstances. That way we have something to compare our ice cube cooling to down the road. So actually we will need that air cooler that we just threw away. Where'd that thing go? This older Intel system will be our guinea pig for this experiment. And in fact, this processor, an i5-3470, is a veteran of sorts when it comes to tech tinkering. The CPU has survived ketchup, mustard, honey, lotion, shampoo, rubber toys, Nutella, you name it, spread all over it instead of thermal paste, and is somehow still going strong. And P.S. If you can think of any other thermal paste alternatives that we should try next, feel free to let me know down in the comments. So back to our Intel system, let's install our CPU fan and run a quick stress test. I like to use MSI Afterburner to track my computer's temperatures, and in this case, we'll want to pay attention to the top left line graph, which is where our CPU's temperature will be displayed over time. To run the stress test itself, let's use Prime95 to max out our processor at full capacity in order to heat things up. 
With the stress test underway, thanks to the CPU cooler pulling heat away from the processor, as you can see, after a few minutes, the temperature settles well below 60 degrees Celsius. So this will be our benchmark moving forward and the true goal that we'll set for ice cubes to try and beat. And with that, we're ready for the ridiculous stuff. So let's go and grab some fresh ice cubes and put them to the test. If you follow my TikTok or YouTube shorts, then it should not be surprising at all to see this entire ice tray filled with frozen CPUs. And if you're not up to speed, I'm pulling out one of these frozen CPUs each month for the next three months, letting them thaw and then testing them in a computer to see what kind of damage ice can cause them over time. If that sounds cool to you, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Today, however, is a different kind of CPU ice experiment. So let's grab these normal ice cubes and bring them back down to our workshop. Okay, now we can toss our traditional CPU air cooler out the window because we'll replace it with our cup of ice. After applying a bit more thermal paste and setting down our cup of ice, I uh, actually lied and we do need to fetch out that CPU air cooler once again. This does actually need to be plugged into the CPU fan header, even though it's not installed in the motherboard, because the system actually won't even power on if it knows that there's no cooler installed. If only it knew it was in the safe hands of ice. Well, we don't actually know if it's really safe or not, but right now we're gonna find out. Powering on the system with the ice cup installed, we can see that so far so good. It hasn't yet shut itself down from overheating. While that's a good sign, let's add a bit of strain by pulling up the same exact stress test that we just ran a moment ago. Think the ice will outperform the active CPU fan cooler? Last chance to make up your mind. Launching the stress test in 3, 2, 1. And almost immediately, we can see the CPU temperature start to increase and climb up super high. And quite quickly, the ice cube appears to be soaking up and dissipating some of the heat that's being produced by this processor. And actually, look at that! As the ice cube actively melts, the temperature of the CPU gradually begins to fall. Even though high 90 degree readings is quite hot for a CPU, the fact that the temperature is responding and falling at all shows that ice actually has at least some potential to cool the computer. As we continue to let the stress test run, the ice cube continues to soak up the excess heat, slowly but surely disappearing into the soupy water. If only the Titanic could see this now, I'm sure it'd make it very happy. And after a couple minutes, the ice cube is basically gone altogether. And now, with only a cup of water sitting on top of the processor, the temperature of the CPU slowly starts to climb again. Eventually, this water will actually boil away, leaving behind an empty cup. Okay, so maybe what we need to do is simply replace the cup of ice every time it melts in order to sustain reasonable CPU temperatures. After all, that's what they do in Futurama to keep the earth nice and cool. So grabbing a second metal cup, let's hot swap our ice to see if we can bring down the temperature with some fresh juice. And with our replacement ice applied, we can in fact see small improvements to the cooling of the processor. But overall, it feels like it might be too little too late. At this point, it's safe to say that ice can in fact be used to cool off a processor in place of a CPU cooler, only if you're okay with a fraction of the actual cooling performance, and as long as you remember to replace the ice every couple minutes or so. Honestly, that's not too bad, I'm pretty happy with it. But now I'm curious what'll happen if we instead replace this cup of ice with a spray from a can of compressed air. If a CPU fan just pushes air around to help dissipate heat, that's basically what this does in can form, right? Well, let's find out by resetting up our system and relaunching the stress test. Without any type of cooling, we can see the CPU temperature ramp up super quickly. And as we spray the processor with our compressed air, we can actually see that we effectively pause the climbing temperature momentarily. Look how it flatlines. How cool is that? Now, eventually the temperature does start to climb again as we can't continuously blow air out of this can, but it is neat to see the heat being dissipated in this manner. And so if we think a non-continuous airflow is our issue, then let's try using this electronic air duster, which can in fact run continuously. With that up and running and pointed at our CPU, we can see that the temperature only budges a degree or two. At this point in the experiment, the CPU might just be a little too hot to handle. And if we look very closely at this point, something on the CPU is beginning to liquefy, so we should probably shut this all down before we do any real damage. With that, I think it's time to give this CPU some much deserved rest. So in conclusion, these ridiculous ways of cooling a CPU actually showed some promise today. We saw that ice was somewhat effective if you were able to constantly swap it out with fresh ice, and our can of compressed air effectively paused the rising temperature of the processor. All in all, a pretty fun experiment. I hope you had fun watching and maybe even learned a thing or two about CPU cooling. That's all I have for you today, so make sure to subscribe for more tech tinkering, and as always, I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.